hit that subscribe button. That way you know exactly when I upload new videos. So the Big Dipper and the Lightning Racer both sat directly north of the Redondo Pier. It was right there on the water for everyone to see and it was a great attraction and people loved it. Let's get into it. Wow! How cool is this you guys? This is the entrance to the Lightning Racer roller coaster which opened Memorial Day 1913. The structure will be one of the most attractive on the oceanfront and will conform in style and architecture to the other amusement buildings on the waterfront. The building and coaster will cost about $100,000 and a large $4,000 organ will be installed when the ride is completed. The entrance will be brilliantly lit with hundreds of electric bulbs and electrical signs flashing to represent lightning as the coaster is called the lightning racer. What a glorious description. This, is, this sounds fun. Let's go on the coaster. Let's do it. The lightning racer was a side-by-side -side car racing roller coaster where people would race to the finish. Just two weeks earlier, Gene Davidson smashed a bottle of champagne on the first car of the roller coaster, just like they do the battleships, to welcome the new coaster to the city of Redondo Beach. How cool is that? The Lightning Racer was Henry Huntington's third major attraction to the beach cities. His first attraction was the Pavilion, which he built in 1907. And then, in 1909, he built the world-famous Plunge. Wow, could you imagine just standing back there in those times, looking up and seeing all three of those attractions? How great would that be? Seriously. While the Lightning Racer was a huge success, its location proved dangerous, susceptible to the violent storms that often pounded the Redondo coast. The Lightning Racer survived its first storm in 1914. And then another one came in February of 1915, which threatened the structure, but crew of 50 men managed to save it from ruin. Then, on April 30th, 1915, just two months later, the Lightning Racer went head to head with a very violent storm that destroyed the entire wooden infrastructure. Thousands of people looked on as the roller coaster fell into the ocean, section by section. Incredibly, the Lightning Racer was rebuilt completely in just a few short months, just in time for the 1915 summer tourist season. The Lightning Racer was no more but a decision quickly was made to build yet a brand new roller coaster called the Giant Dipper. The new roller coaster was built on the same exact location as the old one. It opened in 1924. The roller coaster was a great attraction for 11 straight years. Unfortunately, the Great Depression came and a lack of disposable income for people. In 1931, the Pacific Electric purchased the property and closed the roller coaster down for good. 
The closed roller coaster remained unused for a couple of years before finally being torn down to the ground on December 15, 1933. In 1945, Pacific Electric sold the land in which the roller coaster used to stand on uh, to the California Seafood Corporation. This sale guaranteed the area's development into a more traditional fishing pier atmosphere, so ending the South Bay's roller coaster era. That was so cool. I really wish I could have rode on that roller coaster. Don't you? Okay, you guys. So that was the Lightning Racer and the Giant Dipper. Let's talk about the deaths. From the articles I read about the roller coasters, only two deaths were ever mentioned. While doing my own research, I've been able to uncover five deaths total. Let's go over them now. So July 1923, Herbert Peterson from San Pedro was killed trying to retrieve his hat that had blown off his head. Uh, just three months later, we have a guy named Vest Vestor, also from San Pedro, died when he tried to jump from car to car while the ride was going. Then in October 1923, a gentleman by the name of Dean also decides to jump car to car, falling 50 feet to his death. These last two deaths I'm going to discuss are worth giving more detail to. 1930, a 17-year-old Sydney Parker decided to get out of the roller coaster car and walk alongside of it while his four friends were still in the car. His four friends talked him back into the car while going up the incline. He then disappears and his friends go on the roller coaster three more times before they even realize Sydney is missing. Once they realize he's missing, they look around and finally find him on the ground next to the tracks at the bottom. Okay, now we have the last death, straight out of a horror movie. Herbert Christensen of San Pedro decided to stand up during the ride, turns around, he loses his balance when the car rounds a curve. He falls back into the rear car, the car strikes him and tosses his body down to another track below. While he's still conscious, another roller coaster comes and rolls over his body completely while he's still conscious. I don't know, but that's pretty bad. What do you guys think? Okay, so what I've done, the Giant Dipper was actually a clone roller coaster of another one. So what I've done is made this roller coaster black and white to kind of give you a feeling of what it was like if you had rode on that roller coaster back then. And then what I've done is I've give you a little tease of what roller coasters are like today. What a difference. Let's check it out.
the track. Just like a plane on the aircraft carrier, the catch car hooks up underneath the car, accelerates from zero to 128 miles an hour in three and a half seconds. Finally, without warning, the train shoots down.